And good evening, folks, since it's about to get dark out soon. Um, here's H0 here, back here again with another uh, TV review. This is the OC Season 3. And I'm going to dive right in. Uh, pretty much um, from the last videos, I told you the story is mainly about um, the main character, Ryan, and uh, the adopted family that put him in the family. And where this story is at now, currently, it just took like a very, very tragic twist. And spoiler alert, uh, well, if you, I know you guys remember when I said one of the core four members of the um, cast, one of them was going to die, and it was Marissa. By core four, it was a code word for the four, you know, teens. And um, throughout the whole series, I think it, off the top of my head, it was about four characters that died all together. Um, Marissa was one, Marissa's former friend that she went to school with when she had to transfer because of the, the shooting of Brian's brother, or Brian, Ryan's brother, and then, um, who else, uh, Seth's grandfather at season two, and then, um, it was one of Sandy's lawyer, the guy that trained to be a lawyer, um, pretty much after that, no one else pretty much died, it was still some kind of somewhat tragedies that happened and ironically on the finale of, of when Marissa had died um they were kind of hinting you know even if you didn't see the promos at the time when the show came out it was it was foreshadowing yeah, it was, yeah that's a better word it was foreshadowing that she was gonna die anyway she kept it was using I think her and Ryan were pretty much using you know terms going back and forth that that this is the end for someone and the way she did die was kind of heartbreaking. Um, one of the dudes she was dating, uh, who was a who was a former friend of her dead friend or rival or something like that, they were hooked up, and he realized that he made a screw of his life, and he had lost the one chick he he somewhat cared about, and had ran them off the road. He was pretty much mad that you know the the somewhat former bad boy who was there in the beginning, who was Ryan, had had one you know getting her. <sighs> man but of course he doesn't find out he doesn't well he doesn't say that until season four but it was just a mess up scenario because he had ran him off the road and then ryan even said in season four you know you didn't come down to help you didn't you didn't even you know show any kind of remorse and again i'm not going to get into holding that storyline because that is season four because this one was left off at a cliffhanger you know, with um, with her, uh, with Marissa dying, just like how the season opened up with a cliffhanger when, you know, she ended up shooting Trey to save Ryan's life, and that was a funny mixed bag of what happened right after that because, you know, in some of these communities with the rich people, even they said this on the show, which I kind of believe, if a scandal, it, well, within the community community itself, and then when it goes out to the rest of the world. With a scandal as as super super big, most people don't even care about the details. And a good prime example is um what happened with with um Usher Raymond, when the whole uh herpes uh allegations. And the funny thing is, I'm not a big Usher fan, but the one main detail what I noticed that you know the whole thing was potentially a lie or something that was fabricated was that. I think when the whole allegation, I may be saying that wrong, um, had came out, it took him a while to, to respond to it. I guess he responded because of how ridiculously out of hand it got and how so many sources were saying different things. But getting back to the point that matter, um, yeah, pretty much uh, the scandal, well, the big drama or the big arc or the, the the issue that or okay the conflict that was going on I'm trying to pick my words in a sense the big conflict at hand in the beginning of the season is that they wanted to kick Ryan and Marissa out of school and that would have jeopardized their future all because you know um Marissa had had shot you know his <sighs> his brother and the funny thing that the community had treated it at first they had treated it like this dude that went to school with him and he didn't it was just the fact of, of the shooting but the reason why the shooting had happened was because uh 
Trey, which is Ryan's brother, had attempted to rape Marissa. And, you know, um, he went over to, to confront him right after he told him he went out of Newport for a different reason because he knew something was going on. And then he had found that out. And he went over there to, to, to confront him. Now, he shouldn't really have assaulted them. But at that point, I don't know if he would have went to the police anyway. But with the character's past, you know, or or if anyone, if that was like someone's daughter and that was an attempted rape and you found out who the dude, who, who, who it was and, and it happened and where the dude is, any father would probably go over and, and try to do the same thing, especially if, if this dude has been around your kid and, and you know him. So, you know, it's understandable. Yeah, but, you know... In the beginning, it was a fight between the two of them, you know, and then she ran in, the gun was on the ground, and, you know, she ended up shooting him, and again, they made a big, in the, within the story, they made a big scandal, and then this whole dean of discipline that came in, and he made the whole, you know, situation worse, and he got sucked in, into the gossip, he was saying that he, what he loved about that, about Newport is that people talk, and just by looking at him, he, and I love the actor that portrayed him, his name was, uh, Eric Mobius, I believe, and um, for people who don't know who he is, if you see the first Resident Evil movie, he was, um, he played Matt, the one that got turned into Nemesis, and again, I'm going to review that movie later on and get into that, but he's a very good actor, you know, seeing him on that versus seeing him on this, and I saw him on Fastlane, which was uh, produced by Wonderland that also made the, o that producer made the OC or something like that, but yeah, it, his he was like the dean of discipline. He was pretty much like a a, a hall monitor snitch to, to the to the capital, you know, S. He looked like one of those, um he didn't look older either. He was like one of those college preppy kids from the, the Jason movies that get axed really, really quick. Yeah, you know, he got the sweater around his chest and he just had a face that you just wanted to pummel. Pretty much like um another good comparison, uh that bully from the original Karate Kid, uh, uh, Johnny was his name. I couldn't remember his last name, but I remember he, he had he had one of those snotty faces that you just wanted to, to like bash in like extra extra hard. But uh, yeah, that was a conflict in the beginning. That was a major conflict. Um, and like I said, it was very very interesting because if that would have happened like in in a neighborhood here, where it's like low income. Yeah, people would have cared. Well, people, someone would have cared about the details if if she would have went around and said, "Yeah, he attempt it was he attempted to rape me, and I was scared to come forward." And the thing is, is that with most of these rape allegation cases, they do get swept under the rug because of how long it it has happened, and at that point, it's not really relevant anymore. You know, until a whole bunch of people come out saying this had happened and. Depending on how personal I get, um, I might share a dark side of, of something that happened to me in a similar uh, situation, and it was a long time ago. So, you know, but the thing is, I really can't do anything about it now. The only thing I can do is get away from the certain fa family member that had did this to me. And again, I didn't know better. You know, I had to be about like, what, like two or three with a distant memory, but back to the to the show it's just that that's probably what the character was thinking and the more and more I watched it you know the more and more it came relevant because when I first saw it the 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 series back when it originally aired I was just sitting there this is kind of I was sitting there thinking to myself this is this is stupid writing like they're just purposely dragging out this conflict to get more episodes and more or more viewership but now, of course, being an adult and seeing how these how these celebrities like Bill Cosby get attacked for the whole rape thing, and you know it happened a long time ago, and the, and the women had their reasons why they didn't come out either by fear or, you know, um, just people not not really believing them that they told them in the first place. It's just many many variables that come into play like that. So thinking from the writer's perspective. It does kind of make sense. And later getting into The Walking Dead, I'm going to talk about those same, you know, cue points as well. Because the more and more you look at it, the more you think about the perspective versus what you would do. But nine times out of ten, the information you do know as an audience member, the character doesn't know. And that's what a lot of people don't know, don't understand. Yeah, so 
you know, sometimes how cinema sins and honest trailers make fun of it for it. It is kind of true, but, you know, that's that's how you do good writing is when you can see yourself in the, oh, excuse me, in the perspective of the character, not the not the perspective of the audience. Yeah, you know, it's time and it's good timing moments when you want to include the audience, especially in horror films, when they they know something is going on that the character and the audience member knows. But yeah, you get, like I said, time and place. But um, the acting was really good. A lot of uh, more guest characters on here. Jira Ryan was in the beginning uh, when Kirsten had that whole alcohol addiction. She was playing a con lady um, who, who was like a con artist. And uh, who else? Um, that chick from Deadpool, the one that played uh, Vanessa. I can't remember her name. She makes a couple of um, interested um, appearances on um, a few episodes. She didn't have like a major role, but you know, she, I researched her a little bit. She's actually Brazilian and she's very, very beautiful. She's actually married to Benjamin McKenzie that plays Ryan on the show now. They're actually on Gotham together and it was kind of funny how that was full circle. Yeah, they were both on the show, but they never had any scenes together on the show. Yeah, they only connected through, I think, one of the characters, a few of the characters, but the other um guest characters are uh, uh, Cam J Jalant Jalante, I believe that's how you say it. Um, he was a reincurring character. Um, or or well, character slash actor. Uh, he played Kevin Volchuk, who was the main one that killed Marissa and the one that he was um hooked up with. And um, you you see, actually he's there on the screen right now. A couple seconds ago, he was like to the to the left. No, he was to the right, but he's been on like Twilight and Never Back Down, and um, I think he did another movie with Gina Carano, and there's probably a few other films, but he plays a good bad guy too. And if you see him in, if you see him in this, and then you see him in Never Back Down, it's pretty much somewhat the same character, except on Never Back Down, he's pushed up to a couple of notches. And um, after seeing that, and you know. I think, yeah, I saw him in the OC first, and then when I saw him on Never Back Down, I was like, oh, it makes sense why they had cast him in the in the very, very, you know, first place. Yeah, because um he was a tad bit sleazy and that. Yeah, but he did later become, you know, he, you know, he didn't die or anything, but he made um peace with that character, or, or they came to an agreement or something like that, or they saw each other as, as equals. Yeah, that's it. Now on Twilight, it was kind of weird with him being on there. It's just because, um, you know, uh, I, number one on Twilight, I liked him better with the short haircut that he has on here because he looks more intimidating versus seeing him on there with the ponytail. And, you know, he really wasn't that that threatening. Um, he was just one dimensional villain on that. I think that's why. You know, it's not such an outstanding performance, but I guess it was enough for him to be on Never Back Down for him to get cast on Twilight. So, you know, there's a couple more other Twilight actors from this, yeah, from that show that's on there, and it was one I know his face, but I can't remember who he was because I'm not a Twilight fan. So, yeah, but I recognize his face. Um, Nikki Reed is on here. Uh, only seen her on this. I've seen her in some other movie. I can't. It was some drama movie and um came around the top of my head but she's very very beautiful too so you know and she's very mature that's one of the reasons why they probably casted her to be a certain character to keep Ryan grounded because he was dating her while Volchuk and uh, Marissa were dating each other and uh, Autumn Reeser was another one who I liked on here she's very I think um if I was going you know to um Har uh, Harbor that's a chick that I would date because she loves like anime and Yakuza films. Just she didn't like the comic stuff and I see myself being um the two characters I know I, I can definitely am the character type for is Seth and um and Ryan. Ryan because I know the reality of the world and Seth because I am very, very geeky and nerdy, but I'm not that well, back then I kinda was. I was just like him to a to a point. But now I'm falling more of a little bit of the Ryan character type, a little bit mixed with him. You know, I kind of, of course, matured and moved out, moved through that phase of my life. And then um, I'm trying to think of some other guest stars that appeared on here. Uh, 
Yeah, I think that's the only one. Um, the music on here is also very, very good. Uh, I think um, it's only like one track I, I personally from this season I have on my phone, and there's a few more tracks from throughout the season. But of course, you have the the indie rock bands and the the more mainstream music at the time was being on the show, and um, those are the cues I take, and they even put new themes um for certain characters and uh yeah uh only thing i could think of um you know this one was kind of depressing when i saw it because i saw the whole film reason why they done certain things especially at the very last episode when, when marissa got killed and it's just that over like you guys can tell me in the comments section before have you ever witnessed someone die or even held a loved one or been with them for their last moments before they passed and I know my mom recently had or has when um when our grandfather passed and I didn't choke up until our family reunion and you know it just it's one thing when they do pass but when you go back to where they practically lived and they someone raised you and all those memories just come back that's what pretty much happened. So, again, that's a little bit more personal. I'm not going to get too much into it, but that was my whole spill of the OC Season 3 and a little bit of a banter about me personally, and see you in Season 4. Peace.